Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today, we are examining the language of the London Cockney. What is it? What does it sound like? This will help you understand London speakers, and specifically, East London speakers in the future. And we have a very special guest joining us. Please give a warm welcome to our Cockney friend, Phil. <laughs> Phil, thank you for being here today. Oh, no worries, love. Happy to be here and have a good chat with you. Fantastic. Now, Phil, our viewers are very curious about the Cockney accent and dialect. Could you tell us a bit about how Cockneys speak? Oh, the Cockney way of speaking is a right treat. It is. Cockneys are known for their distinct pronunciation and rhyming slang. Let me break it down for you a bit. Instead of saying going, we say going, we drop the G. And words like stairs become stairs. We like to drop our H's as well. So house becomes ass. That's fascinating. So, it's all about those unique sounds and rhythms. Could you tell us more about the phonetic characteristics of Cockney? Absolutely, love. Cockney has its own set of sounds that make it stand out. We often use what is known in the grammar world as glottal stop, where the sound between two vowels is replaced with a brief pause or closure of the vocal cords. So, instead of saying butter, we'd say butter. And we drop the final T in many words, like get out. We would say get out, and it becomes I. And we drop the final R in words that end in R. So, over becomes over. We also have a tendency to change the TH sound to an F at the beginning of words. So three becomes free and thick becomes thick. And then we drop the G in ING words. So for example, I could say, it's raining in me art. Ah, those are some interesting variations. But seriously, do you think some people sometimes look down on Cockney dialect? They think it's vulgar and low class. Definitely, lovey. I'll give you an example. We Cockneys say me to replace my. So I could say, where's me money gone? And some people think, I, oh, he doesn't know no grammar. Another thing is we use double negatives like they do in New York. So we might say, I don't know nothing about car engines. You know, in English grammar, you should say, I don't know anything about car engines. But actually, in many other languages, the double negative, it's normal. And I can tell you, a Cockney is as well educated as any other bloke in the country. It's just our dialect. It's what we choose to speak. And we're proud of it. Yes, I understand. Now, Phil, are there any modern examples of rhyming slang that you could share with us? Definitely. Cockney rhyming slang has evolved over time, mixing in some more recent references. For instance, instead of hair, we might say barnet. And you would say, barnet doesn't rhyme with hair. And you'd be right. But originally, it was barnet fair. So if someone's got a nice head of hair, we'd say, Look at her, she's got a great barnet. Great. And here's another one. Syrup of figs, guess what that is? It's a wig. And we often just say syrup. So look at that bloke with a syrup. It means he's got a wig. But of course, everyone remembers the old classics like mince pies, eyes, porky pie when you tell a lie, Boat race means your face, and so on. Some of them are cliches and not used much these days. A bit old style, you know. That's brilliant. But complicated. But I love how it keeps evolving. Of course, 
these are old-fashioned phrases. Now, Phil, Cockney culture is often associated with some famous actors, like Jason Statham and Michael Caine. How do you think their Cockney accents have influenced what people think about the dialect? Ah, uh, those lads, true Cockney legends. They are. Their distinctive accents have definitely put Cockney on the map. Whenever you hear them speak, you know they're true East Enders from the East End of London. Their success has given our dialect a real boost, a real shout out for the world and advertise the charm of Cockney to everybody. Now, if you're really enjoying this conversation, would you do us a huge favor and hit that subscribe button? And don't forget to hit the like button too. Do you have a favorite Cockney star? Well, I always loved Barbara Windsor. Bless her heart, she passed away. But my favorite is Martine McCudgeon. You know, she was in EastEnders, a program on TV. She's a bit of a looker, and I tell you what, she's got a great kyber. Ah, uh, oh, perhaps I shouldn't have said that. What is a kyber, Phil? Ah, uh, kyber. It's your rear end or posterior, or in common parlance, your ass. Kyber pass, ass. Got it? Oh, I didn't know. Us ladies are not so familiar with these terms. Now, Phil. Let's move on to some normal conversation examples. Can you give us a taste of what a conversation might sound like between two Cockney friends? Absolutely. Picture this. You're in a traditional rubber dub, which is a pub. It's an East End pub with your mates having a good chin wag. One friend might say, cool, mate, I'm anchoring for a pint. And the other would reply, yeah, I'm gagging for one too. And then you'd say, let's, let's head off to the Winchester. It's a proper good boozer. Let's go to the Winchester. That's so realistic. I can almost feel the lively atmosphere. How about a conversation in a different setting, like a supermarket? Here's another one, right. Let's go to the local supermarket then. You might hear someone saying, oh, love, where's the Toms? I need them for Miss stew." You know, a Tom is a tomato. And the helpful employee would respond, aisle three, mate, can't miss them. Just mind the blokes stacking the shelves. Wonderful. It really gives us a sense of how Cockney is used in everyday situations. Now, let's move on to some interactive exercises that our viewers can try. Phil, could you give us an example? Of course. Let's play a game, shall we? I'll give you a phrase in rhyming slang and you have to guess what it means, all right? Uh, here's one, trouble and strife. Can you figure out what that means? Hmm, trouble and strife. I think that means life. Nah, a joke. Nah, that's a joke. Why don't you try again? Okay, perhaps it means wife. You've got it. Well done, love. Nah. Let's do one more, shall we? What do you think a monkey is? I believe it's something connected with animals, right? Nah, that's a load of cobblers. Have another go. I'll give you a clue. It's connected with money. Okay, I think I know it. I remember, it means 500 pounds, right? That's right, lovey. A monkey is the price of a good carry in the smoke these days. The smoke. All right, you dunno. Smoke means London. Some people say the big smoke. We call London the smoke because of the smog and air pollution in the old days. Right, interesting. Now, you viewers out there, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave a load of phrases a rhyming slang in the video description for you so you can all get your act together and learn how to understand and speak to the real cockneys when you visit the smoke these taxi drivers these doormen these bouncers these waiters they're all cockney you need to speak to them certainly thank you phil 
for sharing this vocabulary with us and giving such a personal insight into Cockney. Well, it's been a fantastic conversation, but sadly, we're running out of time, Phil or should I say mate. Do you have any final words for our viewers? Just remember mates, I'll tell you what, just remember mates, Cockney is a vibrant and colourful dialect that reflects the rich history and culture of London's East End. Embrace the uniqueness of this different accent and this dialect as they truly entrench our language. Keep learning, keep talking and have a butcher's, that's a look, have a butcher's at all the wonders of English when you come to the smoke. Well said, Phil. Thank you once again for being our guest today. And to all our viewers, thank you for joining us on this linguistic adventure. We'll see you next time with more exciting English lessons. Take care, everyone.